Good morning, class. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the writer Mary Rowlandson, whose captivity narrative you will be reading for this class. It is entitled The Narrative of Captivity and Restoration, and it is broken down into the different removes that Rowlandson experienced once she was taken captive by the Native Americans and moved around New England. So don't let that word remove confuse you. It is simply referring to the places that Rowlandson was moved to as a captive. We believe but do not know for certain that Mary Rowlandson was born in England around 1637 so about 20 years after the poet Anne Bradstreet. She died in New England in 1711. She immigrated to the United States with her parents and nine siblings and first settled in Salem, Massachusetts. Then she removed to Lancaster, Massachusetts. In 1656, around the age of 19, she married John Rowlandson in the United States, in, in New England, and had four children. Mary Rowlandson was taken captive by the natives during what was called the King Philip's War, which was a three-year war from 1675 to 1678 between the natives and the colonists. The war refers to an Indian whose real name was Metacom, but who was referred to by the English as Philip, thus the name King Philip's War. What was the war about? There had been relative calm relations between the colonists and the natives from around 1620 when Bradford set up Plymouth and the outbreak of the war in 1660 or 1675. So about 50 years of calm. One of the impetuses for the outbreak of the war was the fact that the colonists were encroaching upon the Algonquins' land, heightening the tension between the colonists of Plymouth, Massachusetts Bay, and Providence, Rhode Island, and various Algonquin tribes, such as the Wapanogs, the Narragansetts, and the Mohegans. In 1664, Plymouth Colony leaders seized a Wapanog chief and hoped to get him to relinquish his rights to the land. When he died in captivity, Metacom became chief and agreed to the colonists' demands. But in spite of this, the colonists continued to encroach upon native land, and they were accusing the natives of aggression rather than themselves. The events escalated and war was declared in 1675. It devastated New England and destroyed the Algonquin tribes. Per capita, it is one of the most deadly wars ever waged on our soil. During the war on February 10th, 1676, Mary Rowlandson was taken captive with three of her children. She was released in 1677 after one of her daughters died. Upon release, she moved to Wethersfield, Connecticut with her family. Her husband died in 1679. She remarried Samuel Talcott and died in 1711. Why do you think 
Rowlandson's text of her ordeal as a captive was written and published. First of all, it was written after the fact. So Rowlandson's memory was no doubt a little vague on numerous occurrences. Most likely she embellished certain facts and downplayed others. Be sure you think about what might be accurate and what might not be as you do the reading and consider Rowlandson's agenda with this text. Her text strongly emphasizes her belief and faith in God and frequently refers to the fact that God is testing her faith through this ordeal. The text was published at a time when church membership and Puritanism was declining in New England. Consider that colonists have now been on new land in New England for 100 years or more. So the Congregationalist churches are declining in their power and popularity, and the clergymen are becoming worried about this. They supported Rowlandson's text and probably were instrumental in the way it was written, sort of mirroring a Puritan sermon in terms of the fact the way that real events are juxtaposed with biblical comparisons and equivalents. The narrative also supported the colonists' negative view of the natives as savages. Pay attention to all the different ways in which Rowlandson uh, terms them. Keep a list of the way she refers to the narrative to the natives. After reading this document, then white colonists were again able to justify removing Algonquin tribes and other native peoples from their region in the name of national security. It is important to think about the relationship between the natives and the colonists in this way. It was antagonistic, and the whites used any opportunity to further what they dubbed the cause of national security, much like the way we do today. This is a centuries-old phenomenon in this country. Also think about the preface to Rowlandson's text. It functions as a type of book review and endorses it so that people are more likely to read it. The preface was written by a very famous Puritan minister by the name of Increase Mather. He aims to highlight the, barbarous, the barbarity of the natives and also reaffirm God's divine protection. After all, God intervened and saved Rowlandson and three or two of the three children who were taken captive. So it is important that you see the document for its agenda in its context and look for the persona that Rowlandson uses to further her mission as an important Puritan woman writing at a time when Puritanism and church membership is declining in the new world.